Today I want to talk to you about the engine mount hardware for the air-cooled Volkswagen. Lots of manuals you can see about how to take an engine out and put it in, but I haven't seen one that actually talks about how the bolts go together and why. This channel, that's kind of part of my core mission is to talk about not only the how, but the why. Because if you have a picture in your head about how things go together, that really helps you to be able to work on it yourself and helps you to understand and that gives you insight into how to fix problems maybe that don't come up very often but that you have to figure out on the fly. Here's a new hardware kit. Here's the old one that came off the car. You have two nuts for the two studs on the bottom. On my engine you have a single bolt for the, the, the upper left mounting bolt position. And for the upper right the mounting bolt position that's shared with the starter, you have the third M10 nut, and then you have this super long bolt with this funny D head. Here are the tools that I keep in my Volkswagen just in case I ever have to remove the engine in the field. Uh, 17 millimeter extension ratchet wrench is just the right size for getting the upper left mount bolt, and this is perfect for being able to reach down and get the nuts on the other three this is the business end of the transmission. The engine is mounted rigidly to the transmission and the transmission itself has two soft mounts at the back and one at the front. That provides the cushions between the engine transmission assembly and the body. Uh, you can see the four main mounting bolt holes that the engine is then bolted to. Here is a Volkswagen starter. It has two symmetric mounting holes, the lower Mounting hole goes in a stud. The upper one receives the end, the upper right engine mount bolt. So I'm going to use a stand-in transmission, since the one in the car is hard to see. Upper left, this is the this is the one with the captive nut. Here's where the starter goes. The starter is here. The starter has a lower mounting stud with a nut right there. Uh, the upper starter bolt goes up here, and it actually is the same as the upper right engine mount bolt. There is where the starter pokes through. There is the upper right mount bolt. And this is where the actual starter goes in. Here's the upper right mount bolt. Here is the lower starter stud. So the starter goes onto here, and then the upper hole lines up with the upper right engine mount bolt. You can't just put the starter on and thread the nut on. It doesn't actually fit around yeah, the starter body. So you have to pull this back, thread that on there, and then put the starter the rest of the way on. Oh boy, that's not gonna, that doesn't even fit to do it with. The... If you need to replace the starter with the engine in, you leave the lower two nuts on the studs of the engine and you leave the upper left bolt on the engine and you just take this bolt off. The D bolt and you slide it through here and then the bolt sticks out there and once you pull it just, I mean, if it comes out here, it'll spin, but you pull it just a little bit, and then you can turn and tighten even. The D-bolt will just bear up against that part of the starter. Here's the oil cooler for this engine. Uh, it's called a doghouse. So this sticks out, and you have a third separate air supply that goes through the oil cooler. In pre-1971 cars, this was mounted inside this plenum, and so there was plenty of room here. So I imagine this bolt just went through the bell housing, through this, this, this would have been a hole, just like this, and then you would stick the bolt through there and put a nut on the end. Well, with the oil cooler here, and there's more hardware that goes here, more hardware that goes here, there's just no way to get to this from the back of the car. There's just no room because the wall of the car is like right here. So instead, 
in this doghouse oil cooler install, there is a captive nut. Inside of it is threaded. And so this bolt just threads in there to hold the engine on. And that's the upper left mount bolt. Getting to it is tricky when it's on the car. These lower studs here and here slide forward through the transmission bell housing and then underneath the car I would reach around, slide this in. I don't have to get it. There we go. I don't have to get it perfect. I mean, it's great if I can get it shoved all the way in, but as long as I can reach down and grab it, it's fine. There's a wall right here on the car. It's really hard to get to, so you have to basically reach down here and by feel. And a lot of times you'll do that and you'll shove the bolt out. Then you have to climb back underneath the car, stick that in up here. And once you're patient, you can get this threaded on there. And again, you can you have to sort of do this by feel. Once it's most of the way on, then it's captured against the starter. So it won't turn. Usually you sort of cant it by one notch. About right, and then it lies, it lies almost against the the, the uh, fan shroud. And then you tighten it. All right, that's nice and tight. And then that, so the nut, the bolt, the transmission bell housing, the starter, and the end of the D bolt form the upper right engine mount. From underneath the car, sort of come up here. This is the stud from the engine. Oh, there we go. Not on engine stud there. Nut on engine stud there. Doghouse oil cooler engines post uh, 71 and later. You have a bolt into a captive nut there. And then the upper right, you have a long, extra long special D bolt through the starter mount in, and coupled with a nut to the engine housing there. I hope you enjoyed that tour of Volkswagen air cooled engine mounting hardware. If you like this video, please click thumbs up and subscribe. Learn more about the vehicles that transport you and never stop figuring stuff out. Thrice, how are you? Hey, it's Thrice. How you doing? Yeah. I know I'm talking to someone. Mm-hmm. Here is a Volkswagen.